Hi everyone. Is well enough to hear me? Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Mikhail, and today I'm gonna be talking about the decentralized applications and uh, the infrastructure behind them. How you can, as a developer, uh, build them with JavaScript. Um, basically, so a quick about me section. I'm a full stack developer. I now live and work in Amsterdam. I work for one of the banks. I've been developing for the last uh, 10 years or so, like trying new APIs and libraries and sharing my knowledge with, with fellow developers. So uh, to give a better grasp about what is uh, dApps or decentralized applications, we'll, we'll have to first go to the, uh, to get to know what, are, what is a smart contracts on blockchain, because this is kind of the underlying layer for the de decentralized applications. After, after that, we will uh, take a look at the definition of what, what, a, what is a dApp, and then look at some JavaScript code, how you can actually interact with a blockchain from your JavaScript code. Then I'll go through some tools and some uh, workflows, I'll, if we have enough time. Okay, so let's get started. Um, just a quick reminder for those who's, who, who were not here for the last five years about the blockchain. Uh, who ever heard and who knows what the blockchain is? Can you please raise your hand? Okay, it's like one third, not bad. Uh, okay, j just uh, as a summary, you can look at this. It's basically a simplified definition uh, what what the blockchain from a developer's perspective is. It's basically uh, the new state of your system, the new block is something that takes into account the older state of the system, the older block applies some function to it, like hashing function. And, and that's how you can basically build on top of the previous ones. And uh, then you can trace it back again. So one of the examples is uh, Git that we all use, hopefully, for, for sustaining the, the, the code base. And you can always switch back uh, 10 days before and see what, what were the changes in your code at that moment. So you can roll back and forth. And this is basically the same goes for, for the blockchain infrastructure. Uh, every next block contains the information about the previous ones. And that's, that would be really handy when we keep exploring the things. So today we'll be talking specifically about the, the Ethereum blockchain, because basically that one uh, in, in the data parameter has uh, not only just uh, information about the transactions, like I've sent the money to you or something like that, but it also can contain much more sophisticated stuff in this data attribute. So. It's relatively new, it's uh, from 2015. It has quite a solid market share, but the main feature for us as a developers is that it has the smart contract functionality. We'll dive deeper into what a smart contract is, but just uh, for you to understand. Uh, so the definition was done about like three, quite, quite some time ago. It's, it's pretty generic. It's basically saying that we can encode some business rules into the code and make sure that the code validates the current state and, and applies the, the, the following, uh, following algorithms. It's being explored in our days by a lot of industries where you need privacy, where you need traceability and stuff like that. So uh, let's take a look at actual code example of what can be a smart contract. So here you can see really simplified version of it. So it can remind you some uh, server-side language like Java, basically it has, um, uh, static typing, it has um, modifiers, and it has methods and properties on the contract. So the main entity, the first class citizen, is a contract. And it's basically a definition of a business rules that you want to apply and you want to validate. Uh, there's uh, much more than that, of course, in it, but we'll just uh, keep it short and move on to actually using it in your JavaScript code. Uh, to, give, to get a, a little better overview how that might work, uh, if you heard about the storage procedures on, uh, in uh, SQL, that's something you can think of like this. When it's a piece of code which is on the server side, close to your database, and can validate and, uh, uh, let's say, extract some data, but, but it's not in your 
backend code, but it's further down the, the, the stack. So if you uh, think of uh, smart contracts, it's something like that. It's stored in the blockchain, it, it works within a blockchain, and you can access it to, to retrieve the data for your app. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the, the life cycle of those uh, entities. Basically, after you write a code, then you do the compilation process when it becomes more, less readable for us as a humans, but be becomes more like a op codes. Uh, then uh, it's being deployed uh, to the blockchain nodes, and then from that moment on, you can access it, you can uh, work with it as with, as with a separate entity. Uh, I, on purpose, I, I, I don't have like uh, any further steps on it because the, the thing that the, the uh, the specific of a blockchain is if, if that something is de deployed there or uh, placed there, you can't really get rid of it. it it's, uh, it's good and bad at the same time, but uh, that's what we have to deal with. So for example, we write some uh, contract code, we uh, deploy it to the chain and we'll get the address, something like this back. Uh, with this address, you can interact, you can retrieve data from it, you can send funds to it. So it becomes a separate entity, let's say, like think of it as a chatbot. A chatbot won't start talking to you on its own, but if you talk to a chatbot, you can get something back. So this is a smart contract in, uh, in Ethereum. Uh, so who, who actually gonna need all that? Uh, why I was talking a lot about this? So it's only about just to explain you what is a decentralized application, or it's, in short, it's uh, called DApp. Basically, it's um, the application that uses blockchain as one of its data sources. And you can retrieve data from blockchain or you can place it there. As an example, I've placed a couple of those. Maybe you heard about the second one. Um, so the, uh, but the first one I would say is a bit more solid and interesting from a developer's perspective. It's a um, file system which employs a blockchain for storing the, the, the private information. And it's basically something like Google Drive, but distributed across all the nodes. And it's uh, <clears throat> more resilient, more uh, uh, stable for, uh, let's say, network disturbances and stuff like that. So until the network exists, until some nodes exist, you can still uh, retrieve your information. It's not centralized. That's uh, one of the biggest selling points about uh, any blockchain architecture. Okay, that was long intro, I guess. Now let's... Uh, look at actual uh, JavaScript workflow, how we as uh, developers can uh, build stuff uh, that works with the blockchain. Um, for that, first we will need uh, Web3. This is a library from one of the groups of the developers who work with blockchain for last years. Uh, basically, it's easy to install like that, and it um, provides you an um, interface to connect from your JavaScript code to the to the blockchain ecosystem to retrieve contract data, retrieve account information, all that stuff. So basically, you can work with it as with uh, any other API in the end. So it starts like this. You basically import it after installation, and then you can connect it to your app. Here, I, there is a line about the provider. Provider is basically the running blockchain. Again, it depends what, what you choose as a provider. It can be something that runs locally, for the testing purposes, it can be one of the test networks. Uh, there are several in each uh, blockchain ecosystem. Uh, or it can be a production one. So it, it, it's basically you can swap it. Uh, after, after that, you can uh, verify that the status is on, that it's up and running, and then you can uh, work with it, as I said, with any other third-party API. Um, let's look at some of the workflows. Uh, for example, the, the contracts, those uh, the smart contracts I was talking before, after they are compiled, and they, they become basically a part of your app in a way, because you, if you wanna do something with it, if you wanna call its methods or retrieve data that they store, you will need them within your app code, and this is the way you, you can do it, basically. You read the, the compiled version of it. This ABI is basically, uh, it's a, a binary interface file, so it's something that is uh, happening with, with, with a contract code after it's being compiled, and then you can use it in your JavaScript to, to interact with it. For example, uh, here we want to call one of the method, methods on the contract. Uh, I have a contract code uh, on the right, like uh, it was in the beginning, 
and uh, uh, the JavaScript part is on the left. Basically, you mm, it's asynchronous, as you can see. So when you make sure that the app is online and the contract is accessible, then you can call a methods on it and retrieve data uh, like this, for example. Uh, uh, as you can imagine, if we're building the app for uh, users, uh, we need some user data, like user accounts. So I, I cannot trigger some transaction. I cannot send funds or receive funds if I don't have my own account in the system. So the again, Web3 has a whole uh, list of uh, methods to, to do all that. Uh, you can uh, uh, retrieve the accounts uh, from the system that belong to that user and then continue other operations on behalf of the user. That's quite a simplified view, of course, but uh, uh, I'll, I'll have more about the tooling in, in the further slides. Uh, as soon as we have user account, we can, uh, again, uh, do some transactions, send some, uh, some information. For example, in this uh, contract method, we have a, a user address in, in set owner, and uh, to call that, we will need uh, user account information. We retrieved that in the JavaScript in the previous slide, and now we're going to send it to the to the a contract ent uh, entity. So that's that's uh, examples of the workflow, how it's being implemented uh, when you use uh, Web3. Uh, just a quick overview of what's actually happening be be uh, behind the scene. Uh, so you have the D app is your simple uh, SPA uh, JavaScript application, but uh, under the hood you have the, the, the blockchain ecosystem, which is uh, can serve like a, another data source for your app. And when something happens in the UI, let's say uh, I, I press a button or user does a search or something, then uh, the app calls the Web3, Web3 calls the uh, locally or uh, network uh, where the blockchain is running, then the transaction is being initiated, then it's being mined, and then when the result uh, appears, when the, the transaction is done, uh, then we can retrieve it and show it as a notification for a user. Uh, moving, moving further, uh, as I said in the previous slide, you need a network here. Uh, and where do we want to get a network? For that one, there's another tool, it's called Genage. Uh, it's from another uh, developer team. Uh, it's basically a local version of a blockchain on your machine. Uh, it's installed uh, as easy as that, and it also has a UI version and the CLI version. So by installing that guy, you'll have running blockchain on your machine in, in no time, basically. It creates some, uh, some test accounts and you can really interact with it from your app and do the testing. Uh, play with it, it's really cool. Uh, another tool you will need to actually compile the contracts, because, because again, as I said, contracts are not usable until they are compiled and installed into the chain. It's called Truffle. It's actually uh, the whole uh, list of tools. It's a suite where you can uh, compile the contracts, migrate. Migration is basically a process when you have a newer version. As I said before, uh, you can't really change something that is already deployed into the chain. That's why uh, there is a migration procedure when you have one static contract which is pointing to different version of a newly deployed one. <coughs> So yeah, again, this tool is installed pretty easily, and f if you are a beginner, there's a really nice uh, functionality. You can get simple, simple D apps with the contracts, and you can run uh, like Truffle Unbox, and then the, the name of this uh, package, and then you will get the whole the whole structure of a simple app which can do one or two things, like the one I was showing in the code before. So really, uh, take a look at it, play with it. You will get a uh, better picture of how things are connected, how th things are working together. Uh, just to wrap up about the actual workflow process, so as I said, for local development, you have Ganesh CLI as a network and Web3 as a, as a provider for, for the chain. Uh, if you move on, let's say, to, to more testing environment, uh, Ethereum, for example, they have around five or six test networks that where basically the you can deploy contracts, you can run it there, but uh, the, it's more like a test, so it's not real money involved there, that's why you can uh, play around with that. But as, as, as long as your 
yeah, project is more or less uh, finished or you want to release it, then you go to a real uh, uh, Ethereum chain. And, or, for example, if it's some um, mm, corporate uh, product, then you can run actually a private blockchain. There are a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but there are several tools where you can do that. And uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't mean that any blockchain application should be using the, the open network. It's uh, just, just a, a concept that can be run uh, on premise. Um, there is even more tools. Uh, of course, you cannot really fit all of them in 20 minutes talk. Like there is an IDE where you can write smart contracts, uh, debug and compile. There is a binding for React.js apps. That's, I think, pretty cool if you're a JavaScript developer. So basically, it will take care for managing the state of, of the uh, blockchain for you in the JavaScript side. There are other stuff like MetaMask and Mist, but it's more for from the user side. You'll take a look at it uh, when, when you are uh, familiar with, with the beginning part. And uh, yeah, uh, if you want to dive more into actual smart contracts, there is a nice library called Open Zeppelin, which, which is something like, uh, I don't know, low dash in JS world. It has a lot of basic stuff that you may reuse and save you a lot of time. Okay, uh, just a quick summary. Uh, we can uh, write decentralized applications by uh, adding functionality of interacting with the blockchain to the normal apps. Uh, the, you can interact with a, a blockchain like uh, Ethereum, which has smart contracts. Uh, for that, you can use uh, Web3.js. It's a really cool library which, which has your back covered uh, in all the needed uh, use cases. And there is a set of tools called Truffle to have you up and running locally and develop for, for the blockchain. Well, I hope you had some uh, grasp on what it is. Here is the link with the presentation. And I'll, I'll be happy to answer questions uh, now or during the day. Uh, any questions? Yeah, you're right. There, there are more blockchains that feature smart contracts. But I was talking about the most popular nowadays. That one you named, I, I didn't because yeah, I I did some stuff with Ripple, but it's less smart contracts. It's more like a distributed peer-to-peer -peer transaction thingy. But yeah, I mean, it's the, the booming industry, and there's uh, you don't have time to 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 take a look at all the, the rising things. So I just try to summarize one of the mainstream ones for you. Any more questions? There's a guy there. So the, the blockchain stuff's super cool. What's the big business value to having a private blockchain that's not Ethereum or something else? What's, what would you say is the biggest business value? I know there are a few, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, I would say it's, uh, it could be used uh, with a consortium of uh, businesses, the companies that already work together, but they want to put their trust on a more digital manner. Let's say supply chain or the banking industry, they kind of already work together and they trust, but they don't really trust, right? You want something written in, in an in a immutable uh, form, uh, format, and that's, I think, where you can really employ a privately run blockchain. I mean, it, 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 it doesn't need to be closed from everybody. It's just closed ecosystem, like internal network of a company. That's it. So, to answer your question? Uh, any further? Okay. Uh, one more. Oh, oh, 
So could you basically move like the entire data layer of your app onto the blockchain theoretically? Uh, theoretically, yes, but that's not a very good idea because nowadays, I mean, the blockchain itself, uh, Ethereum or any other, it's still in quite an immature state and the, we're trying to not to do any bigger computations there because it's not that capable actually. I mean, if you um, look at the more details about the, the the implementation of it, you you just better run only verification stuff there, but all the data storage and uh, computation heavy stuff should be outside of the, of the chain. That's that's the general rule, and I think that will stay like that. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Please give it a hand for Michael. Thanks, guys.